I wanted to ask you to just read these three pieces of text. They're, they're fairly short. They're all about young people, and I, I want. I just. I was interested to know what you thought about them, or what you think it's saying about young people. And if you were to rewrite the quote about young people, what would be more accurate? What would be closer to the truth about young people? Is that okay? So I'll give you these, and I'll give you a few minutes to just have a little conversation about them. And what in a decaying age, young people no longer respect their parents. They are rude and impatient. They frequently inhabit taverns and have no self control. What is to become the problem? Scripture. What is happening to our young people? They disrespect their elders. They disobey their parents. They ignore the law. They riot in the streets, inflamed with wild notions. Their morals are decaying. What is to become of them? The young people of today think of nothing but themselves. They have no reverence for parents of old age. They are impatient of all respect. As for the girls, they are forward, immodest, and unladylike in speech, behaviour, and dress. A tribute to Peter the Hermit. But he's talking about young people, and I just I want to see what you thought about it and, and if it was applicable now and yeah there might be differences of opinion which is fine and what, what were some of the things you were talking about in response to these quotes about young people would anyone want to offer me anything yes yeah first of all uh the, the problem with the general generalization did it say all young people i mean some and uh on the other hand i don't think it's true uh, because, yeah, okay, some people uh, uh, write, but they, are, they have the right to, to demonstrate for a, a better environment, which is good. But I don't think uh, it's uh, correct. I don't read. With this, I don't know the thing. Yes, oh, okay. sorry. Okay. Yes. Uh, anything else then coming out of it? Yes. 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 Um, come to a conclusion that the question itself is wrong. We should really ask um, about the attitude, whether they're still existing, like this generation gap, or, or how like um, older people view younger people, rather than younger people fitting the category which they create. That's what we, where we started from. We were sort of here, um, and about it, it about renewal. The young people, it's, it's part of how culture develops, is that they have to overthrow the old way of doing it. You know, renew it all the time. So demonstrate, renew, overthrow, interesting, okay, yeah. Listening to you guys, since you're much more intellectually <laughs> viewing this, we were moaning about being old. <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> I'm one. <laughs> what sort of things were you saying then? Well, it's just that we kind of agreed. <laughs> okay, let's stop following. <laughs> we don't think about it. Okay. No, the other, other thing, I, I think it's true in the sense that that's how all the people feel about the young, young generations, and that's, and that's true. So, we're, I was just suggesting maybe we should just add if you change anything. We just add that I'm old, so I think uh, <laughs> okay, so you, young people are so and so, which is you know it's a, it's an acceptable point of view, but it's also the you know the cycle of of life as well. I guess there's a little risk with that about that generalisation thing, though. So it's not, I don't know if all old people think that. So we kind of got to be fair in that yeah, sense. More, more so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll see. Okay. <laughs> anything else? That, any, uh, did anything resonate, or anything really sort of interest you, or you were curious about? You'd like to? Ask? Yeah, we, we were just basically saying that probably something similar would be mentioned. You know, about them looking inappropriate or going out too much, and maybe the phone issue is really <coughs> as an extra thing, but we don't necessarily agree. So the majority would probably blame it on modern technology, but there is always something to blame something on. Just... Okay. 
and maybe also that everybody was a child or a young person, so they can like they can say like I know because I was young, and I it gives you like a legitimate see to say things about young people. Um, and, yeah, because you were also young, but it's far from where you are now as uh, when you grow older. So I think it's interesting. And also it would be, because you said what would the drink you in this, it would be interesting because this is the view of the old people toward the young people. It would be interesting to know the view of the young people towards the older generation. For example, I was uh, um, saying the fact that in Greece in 2008, before the crisis, we had the huge riots organized by young people against this whole culture, because capitalism reached its peak by then, mm -hmm. and against this whole materialistic culture and uh, that they were inherited by the elder generation. They didn't want it, they didn't create it, they didn't ask for it, as, and they inherited this culture. Mm -hmm. So there were huge protests mm -hmm. and riots mm -hmm. um, because of this. It was the voice of the younger generation towards the older. It, that's really interesting because if I just move us along a little bit, because whilst I was in the museum um, and I was researching things, and this is where you might need to help me because I'm not too clear on, on some of the finer details, um, I started to do a little bit of research about the uh, uprising, uh, the revolution here in Budapest in 56. Is that right? <laughs> just checking my facts. Um, and, and, and I was quite interested in it because uh, from what I found out, uh, predominantly that, that revolution, that uprising, was, was led by young people. And um, that kind of struck a chord with me, given what we're doing this week and what we're thinking about this week. And it's as if we've rehearsed that, because you started to mention, I think that's a really nice way into what we're thinking. So for, for those that, that aren't too sure, I, just, I had some notes about what, what, what I found, and maybe particularly, I don't, not to be... Um, not to presume anything, but maybe my Hungarian colleagues might be able to help me out a little bit here. So, uh, in about October 56, 1956, uh, Hungarian students took to the streets to protest against the Soviet government and their sort of rule uh, over Hungary. Um, I found out last night from Adam on the tour that uh, it started originally as a protest against, uh, in support of uh, dock, uh, dock workers in Poland, is that right? Yeah. So that was a new thing that I found out there. Uh, the riot spread through Budapest, uh, and the Soviets agreed to form a new government uh, led by Imre Nagy. Nagy, sorry. Okay. Uh, so following that, then this new government uh, formed, and um, the, um, the there was a growing pressure from Hungarian people for sweeping reforms, for new reforms, for new ways uh, to uh, run the country. Um, and these included free elections to choose governments democratically and uh, to leave the Warsaw Pact. Is everyone okay with the Warsaw Pact? Mm. A group of countries that are uh, in allegiance with the former USSR. Okay. Um, the Soviet government then at the time saw that as a bit of a threat and thought, oh, if they leave, this is going to mean bad things for us and it could potentially mean that our government will fall. Um, so they reacted to the uprising and sent tanks and their army into Budapest to suppress the rebellion. Now, I'm sure it's a lot more intricate than that, but that, from my research, <laughs> it is kind of where I'm coming from. And I hope I'm not offending anyone when I'm, I'm but that's just the, the, the depth that where I've got to. But, but something else I found out that was quite interesting whilst I was at the museum is that um, when I did a little bit more research, I found the story of a, a particular person, and you might not have heard this story before, um, but it, it, it's troubled me. It's, it's made me really curious about this person and why they did what they did. So the story is about uh, a young man who's 24. It's called Timar. I think I've said that, pronounced it correctly. Timar David. And um, he, he did something following the uprising in Budapest, which is really just sort of stuck in my head, which I'm, 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 I'm hoping that you might be able to help me with. To help me tell that story, there are some eyewitness accounts about what Timar did. And I'd like to share that eyewitness account with you. And then I'll take some questions after about what I do know. Is that okay? So I've shared the eyewitness account here. 
So just read it. They snatched a madman in the town, in the town square. He was set under the war memorial. His face was soon, soon right up. Eyes, ears, and mouth. He had a sign round his neck. Don't know what it said. Too many people crowding around. Some of them was abusing him. So an apple hurt him. Check it hard and close up. Then the AVH, which is the um, State Protection Authority or Secret Police, uh, then the AVH comes, masses of them, overkill. They was really rough. Some of them. They was okay. They were really rough. One of the AVH uh, was having a right dig. Bloke couldn't see to defend himself. Then something. Snapped. Having read that and just seen it first of all, and bearing in mind some of the information I gave you before, what are there any questions that are coming out, or is there anything else that you'd like to find out about this particular incident, this 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 story that's been presented to you here? Is there anything that's coming out of your conversation? What, 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 the, what, what, the, what was in his neck? The, the sign, the sign. sign. I, I don't know, it, just, it says in there that he had a sign around his neck, don't know what it said. But that's quite interesting because, that's one of my questions actually, because it, it must be something to provoke some sort of reaction. That's all I know. Uh, the bloke couldn't see the defense, I assume it's the guy, so I know, but when something snapped, was that, did he snap or did it? Snapping the crowd. That's one of my questions as well. What I do know, just to add a bit more detail, is that Timar the man, I do know that he went to the war memorial himself. I don't know where the war memorial is, he didn't tell me. He went there himself and he did this to himself. What? So he stitched his face, his mouth, He did it to himself. Good question, I don't know why. Was there anything else that coming out of the... Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a practical question. Um, um, sorry, uh, one of the AVHs was having a right dig. Okay. Uh, quite, what is a right dig? So, punch. Ah, uh, punch, okay. Okay. Like okay. Yeah. okay. okay, well, uh, just, to be, just, just to sort of help us a little bit then, what, what I thought, well, if I could be allowed, I'm, I'm going to ask you to help me with some questions. There's three questions that I'd like to maybe think about in this session today. So the first question is this. How did Timar stitch his face up? So literally, how did he do it? And I'm interested in that because if, if you touch your ears, touch your ears, they're quite gristly and quite hard. And then if you contrast that and touch your eyelids, they're quite soft. Oh, and come on, <laughs> and, and then your lips, you know. And then what I'm interested in as well is what, what order would you do it? Would you do your ears first, then you'd have to change the needle and do your eyes? So, or, or, or would you start with your mouth, but then the pain might make you go, ah! And then, so I'm interested in that. So how did he actually do it? How did he do it? That's the first question. If, what if you don't want to think about that? The second question... Yeah. If I just get the question, so the second question is... The second question that I'm intrigued about is exactly what you brought up there. What did the sign around his neck say? And I genuinely, I don't know, and I'm inviting you to maybe come up with some suggestions. So what did the net sign around his neck say? And the third question that I'm interested in, that I'd like your help with, is exactly what you brought up with. The last sentence where it says, then something snapped. I, again, I don't know what that is, and I'd be interested to know what you think it is. So, three questions. How did he do it? What kind of order? Or, what did the sign say? Or, what is the something that snapped? So I'm just going to give you four or five minutes and then we're going to move into some drama tonight. I just wondered if, if we as, as, as uh, well, you as little groups, could just think about Timar at, at that particular moment, just just before he does the stitching. So, so I I don't know what it looked like. And was he standing? Was he sitting? Was he? Did he? How did he move into the space? How did he get to that space? Did, did he thread the needle whilst he was there, or did he already have it pre-prepared? I'm not sure. And and I was wondering if if you as groups could just start to think about that and just make that very small moment 
of action. Okay, so just a small moment of action where Timar arrives at the war memorial and is about to begin the act. Can we hold the sign, sign up? What, what? I put 10 people in prison. Oh, is it 10? I heard no. 10. 10. Does, what does that mean now for those, those questions that I asked you at the beginning? How did you do it? Why did you do it? What did the sign say? Is this, is this what the sign says? It's like, more like out of guilt now that he's sitting there, not to protest, but more like... That's interesting. Is, it, is this a protest? I think not just this one, but all the different scenes. Are they a protest? I think it is. I think he could be a member of the secret police. Okay. And he's admitting to the atrocities that sure. he's done as part of being the secret police. Since he's doing that in public, it is a protest. If he was doing that at home, it would be like a guilt syndrome or whatever, a punishment mm -hmm. to, to himself. Mm -hmm. But it's public now, so it changes the whole meaning of the mm -hmm. <coughs> So it has to be public to be a protest? Yes. 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 But public can be like nowadays on social media, it's public too. It's, it doesn't have to be, it can be a virtual public. <laughs> <laughs> A virtual public, yeah, the, absolutely, this is Sorry? interesting, but I'm just talking about now, we're just talking okay. about... Who you asked that had my question, I had not questioned it at all, but it wasn't, it, I just assumed it was a protest, okay. it was always a protest, but now... I, I think, if, but I think if he's a uh, ex-secret police, uh, even then it's a protest, so it's a, or, or a yes. demonstration, so I mean... But uh, but what was it? What was strange or interesting for me was the there was a real coolness, like uh, you know, perhaps because of the props as well. I could just imagine <laughs> walking, walking out of a conference and uh, laying things out there. And really, but there was a real there was a real relaxedness in in how uh, she was uh, she was doing it, uh, and and the sign was very. Different, or, or it, it was in very it, for me. It was very much in contrast with the sign. It, it, it was a bit like a ritual as well. Mm -hmm. Almost it, to me, it felt like she'd done it before, like mm -hmm. with the water as well. You know, like, well, if it's water, I thought it was water. Yeah. Uh, if it was water, <laughs> yeah. I like. Yeah. Donald eating his apple over. Sort of angry or mean at the same time. I've, because we, nice we do know from the eyewitness statement that later yeah, we'll the, throw the apple thrower, mm -hmm. something provokes yeah. someone to throw an apple close. Mm -hmm. 
at the beginning then, I asked you those three questions that, that really intrigued me. So how, how did he do it? And I think that question has changed a little bit more now as we sort of near the end to, to why is he doing it? And we're just starting to question that uh, and link it in with some of the um, information about the uprising that I mentioned to you a, a, a little earlier. The second question, what, what did the sign around his neck say? Well, yeah, we've had some interesting suggestions. Maybe we could, we could push that a little bit more and, and it could turn into... Um, a bit of a writing activity where we get get uh, um, people to, to think about what the science of the language that you use and, and what kind of language could create or provoke certain reactions from uh, people reading it. And I know that yesterday we talked a little bit in Adam's session with the, the poem about authorship and uh, how that context can change the meaning of certain texts. Um, so again, it's, uh, in terms of literacy, it would be an interesting way to, to put that there. The third question was, um, what's the something that snapped? Mm. And I, well, you failed, because I don't know. Um, I asked for your help, you've not helped me. Uh, has anyone got any answers to that then, the thing that snapped? Could be the neck or the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because he goes like, just before and then something snapped. <laughs> so literally, physically. Physically, or then the atmosphere. Something happened. Maybe the crowd gets crazy, and they all went to be under. One option would be to think about the crowd going like against the secret police. Oh, these were all conversations. 